video for Mary. Mom's laughing. <laughs> for Mary. Mary came in a few weeks ago and wanted to make some flowers. And I did show her, but she kind of needed a refresher. So rather than write out the instructions, we figured the best way is to do a video because we're visual people. So we're going to make these little flowers. This came in a kit a few weeks ago, but they have sold out. But these are very easy for you to make at home. Take a little old tin, a little bit of floral foam in the bottom, stick these on either twigs or wire, stick them in, put some Spanish moss around, and you have a cute little decoration. So let me show you how I did those. I have already punched a little circle um, on a height of number four with my ultra punch needle. I used the height of number four and I used the medium tip. This is our OTF grungy gold floss. You'll see it when I flip it over and you see the finished product. Um, I'm using all six strands. This is our OTF dirty white. I am also using the medium needle, but I've now switched it to a height of number 12. So we're gonna start punching right up close to that circle. See how long that needle is? You have to kind of train your hand for that height. We're going to go around the circle a couple times. Really takes some getting used to with that needle height. to create nice, long, lush loops. I'm going to go around one more time. my spinner punch needle frame. You can see that the fabric is super tight. We're using weaver's cloth. Weaver's cloth has a 55-45% poly cotton, so it will prevent any tearing or ripping. That's what you want to use for punch needle with the ultra punch. Almost there. punched our little flower. Now when you flip it over, you're going to see a cute little daisy. So again, the center was punched at a height of number four with our grungy gold floss. The outside was punched with two rows at a height of number 12. Both were used with the medium tip. To finish this, we're going to cut off the weaver's cloth about a half inch around, and then we're going to glue the weaver's cloth to the back of the flower. Then we're going to stick our little stick in or our wire in and we're going to finish it with a little round piece of wool and then we're going to put it in our old tin. So that's the little punched flower. Now, you want to stop? No? Okay. We're going to do one more flower. This one is those over there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I got it. This one has much longer petals, you can see. I'm going to do it with the yellow floss in the center, so it's going to look a little different than that. So I've already punched my center. You can see it's a little larger than this first flower. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the front. When you're punching, you know you work from the back. But now to do this technique, I'm working from the front. Bear with me for a moment while I change my thread. With this technique, you can use any kind of center you'd like. 
you can use a metaphor. I'm going over to there. Okay. I will stop talking and your mom's going to show you that flower. Okay. shop is located in northern New York. It's a beautiful day out. It is about 80 degrees. I like this good. For this technique, I'm using a single strand of Valdani number no. 8 pearl cotton. Now we're going to make those nice, long, lush loops. So again, we're working from the top. We've already punched our middle at a height of number four. We're going to punch down and I have my needle set at the height of number six. We're going to punch down. After I've punched down, I'm going to find the needle tip with my finger and I'm going to hold that, in, in, that loop in place. I'm going to pull down and I'm going to go back up. I'm going to pull down. Push it down, find the needle tip, hold my loop, pull down. Push down, find the needle tip, pull down. And I'm going to keep going around my entire flower. Now, I did screw up because I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to do three or four rows of this. So I should have started further down. I should have started here and worked my way in. But it'll be all right. So now you're just going to reverse it? I'm going to make it difficult for myself. <laughs> I'll just move those loops out of the way. So you can see, make sure you don't... I grabbed my loop. Make sure you don't... When you stab down, make sure your finger's out of the way. You don't want to stab yourself. Find that needle dip, hold it in place, pull it down. You can see when I pull it down that the tip of my needle is hitting the meaty part of my thumb right here. I'm holding that loop in place. I'm going to bring it back up, and I'm going to punch it down. Hold the loop, pull it down, bring it back up. Hold the loop, bring it back down, move my finger, punch down. Hold the loop, bring it back down, bring it back up. I'm going to stop right here, and then what I'm going to show you, I will continue this flower. I don't want to be nosy, but I have my hands in there. Why? I don't know. Because it's by the camera. So, if I had started further down right here and made my way in, this would be a lot easier. But I'm just going to pull those loops out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start again. Hold it. Pull it down. Hold it. Pull it down. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you how creating these layers is really going to fill this flower in nicely. Hold it, pull it down. Hold the loop, pull it down. Hold the loop, pull it down. Hold the loop, pull it down. Just remember to keep that finger out of your way. You don't want to stab yourself. So you can see, I may have to do four or five layers, but this is going to fill in, well, maybe four layers. That's going to fill in and give us a nice red flower. I'll keep punching this and come back and show you it at the end. Okay, so you can see that I have done, I did about four rows around here. Um, I actually pulled out what I started before and then backed it up to here and then started punching around. I didn't have a drawn line or anything, but you can. Draw yourself a line and then work inwards. Um, you can see how it creates a nice full flower, just like this one. This is my first version. Center is a little bit bigger. Uh, two important things to remember. Um, punch your middle from the other side on a height of number four. That gives you nice, higher up, lush loops. Mm -hmm. Flip it over. Put your needle at a number six, 
and do what we did before, holding onto the loops and pulling long loops like that. After I'm done, I kind of take my scissors and I just kind of very, very gently kind of pull everything, you know, kind of like comb out those loops so that they're nice. And then I'm going to trim this, probably would comb them out after I trim it off. Yeah. But we're going to trim this off the weaver's cloth about half to three quarters of an inch away from the center, being very careful not to cut these loops. Press that weaver's cloth to the back of your flower, and then stick whatever you're going to make as your stem. We're using a little wooden spindle here. Mm -hmm. um, stick it onto the back, and then back it with a piece of wool. And then you have a cute little thread flower. Um, you can see with this one, I trimmed some of the edges just to give it a more ragged look. Mm -hmm. Um, but this one we're going to leave the loops on. So you have two different flowers. This is done completely from the back at a height of number four for the center, number 12 with your pun ultra punch needle for the loops around the center, working completely from the back. Here's the center punched at a number four from the back. Flip it over and pull your loops from the front. So, Mary, I hope that helps you, and thank you for watching.